Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Naomi, the zookeeper here at Symbio. Um, we're about to take a look at my favourite animals, which is actually some of our Australian reptiles. So let's take a look. <laughs> Alright, so the first one that I'm going to get out for us today is actually one of the coolest lizards we have in Australia and one that you can commonly have as a pet. So this guy is what we call a bearded dragon. Now the bearded dragon has heaps of cool little adaptations about him. So firstly by looking at him he looks like he is covered in lots of spikes but it's a little bit of a trick because if you actually have a look at me touching him here he actually just bends all those spikes down as you touch him so he's not really as prickly and spiky as you think he might be. So in the wild he's going to have to protect himself somehow and by looking prickly and big and scary that is hopefully going to ward off other predators but in fact he's just a bit of a tricker and he actually isn't prickly at all. Um, so he has a few other tricks up his sleeve to protect himself. Now firstly by looking at him um, what he'll do is he'll actually use that beard. So at the moment he's very calm and relaxed um, but if he was scared or threatened or he wanted to communicate to another lizard he would actually puff out that beard like a big balloon and it will come out big black colour which is where they get their bearded dragon name from and that is supposed to look big and look really scary for other animals. Now if that doesn't work and he's still might be in a little bit of danger he's actually going to turn around and he's going to use his really strong legs to just run as quick as he possibly can now when he does run he's going to find somewhere to hide whether it be underneath a rock or underneath some kind of hole and when he's in there he actually has something pretty cool that he'll do if you have a look all of his scales they're actually all face downwards. So it's very easy for us to run our finger down the lizard, but it's almost impossible to run your finger back up the other way. So if he finds himself something to hide under, maybe a little hole or a crevice, he takes a very dig, big deep breath in, and that is actually gonna stick those scales into the rocks around him and stick him in there like Velcro. So you literally cannot pull him back out. Now after that, what he'll do is he's just going to wait until he feels really safe. Um, and then once he feels safe, he's going to relax he's going to take a little look outside and if he feels like he's um, out of the danger zone um, he'll then go back out and hopefully climb up a stick and sunbake and stick himself out like a big pancake yeah, so <clears throat> There are a few different kinds of bearded dragons. The one we have today is a centra central bearded dragon, which is why he's that beautiful colour. Um, but there's some you can find around the east coast, which is right where we are now. Um, the difference in them is their size, the shape of their head, and just their coloration as well. Um, but all the same, they do have very similar features. Um, and they will eating, be eating a lot of bugs and vegetation at the same time. So a bit of an omnivore. Um, some of their favourite things might be running around and getting crickets, grasshoppers, all those different kinds of stuff. Um, and they may still a few different berries and flowers out of your gardens as well. Now we're going to pop him back and we are going to get at our next animal. Now this one again is a really cool lizard that you can find in your backyards and this one is found right here in Sydney. So this is what we call a blue tongue lizard. Now the blue tongues, they are really cool. There's a few different species that you can find across Australia. He has a little bit of lunch on his lip at the moment. We'll get that off. Um, so this guy here is what we call an Eastern blue tongue lizard. You can find heaps of different blue tongues across Australia and they all have little different adaptations. Um, but this one here, you can find that in your backyard in Sydney. So firstly, by looking at him, he has this beautiful coloration throughout all of his scales. Um, he's going to be very good at camouflaging. So this lizard, unlike the bearded dragon he actually lives on the ground so the bearded dragon will live up in trees and on sticks and he will take refuge on the ground as well but this lizard if you look at him he has tiny legs and a big body so he's not very good at climbing he's not very good at running very fast either so by staying on the ground he will camouflage into lots of leaf litter underneath logs underneath some sticks and all kinds of different stuff um, and then that's where he's going to be seeking shelter now if he runs into a predator or into some danger he's actually going to be sticking out his tongue like he is right now um, and by sticking that tongue out that's hopefully going to ward away that other animal. So colours like red, yellow, blue, usually in the animal kingdom they will mean danger or poison. Um, but on the blue tongue's sake he's actually a little bit harmless. He's a bit of a tricker just like our um, bearded dragon. He's actually not very venomous and he, he's not venomous at all and he doesn't have any danger really. He's quite a harmless lizard. So other things like a red belly black snake or a blue ringed octopus we know that we don't want to go near those guys because they can be quite deadly um, but him, he's just a tricker. 
So he's going to stick out that tongue. He's going to try to look big, try to look scary. Um, and if that doesn't work, he's going to turn around and he's actually going to use his tail. So in your gardens, you might find lots of skinks and little lizards around and quite often their tails will fall off. So this guy, he is one of the biggest members of that skink family and he can actually drop off his tail. Now, what he'll do is if he's scared, he will turn around and he'll drop that tail off wherever he thinks it might need to drop. And in that tail, it will have a lot of nerve endings to hopefully wriggle around uh, for long enough to distract the predator or the danger that he feels threatened by to then let him scurry away and find something to hide under. Now, even though he does lose his tail, he can actually do something even cooler, which means that he can actually grow it back. Um, so if he does lose his tail, over time, it might take a few months to a year, depending on how much he's dropped off, um, it will actually grow back. And he can only ever grow it back once, and it never does look as beautiful as his first tail, but he actually does need his tail. So in the wild, what he'll actually do is he'll be running around eating lots of bugs, lots of insects. He will eat some plant matter as well. Um, but throughout winter, we notice a lot of our bugs will actually disappear. So just before winter, this little blue tongue will run around eat as many bugs as he possibly can and put all of that food right into his tail. So then throughout winter it gets a little bit too cold and he will basically sleep the whole time um, and use all that fat storages in his tail as his food and then coming out the other side when all the bugs come back he'll go on a huge feast again and eat all those extra bugs around him. So we're going to pop him back and I'm going to get out my last lizard for the day. Now this guy is pretty awesome. He's a little bit bigger than those two. Let me just have a look. Hey, beauty. Now, this guy is what we call a Spencer's monitor. So this lizard is a monitor, so quite often called a goanna. Um, very common to have lace monitors and things around this area here. Um, but he's actually a little bit different. He's sort of a medium-sized monitor and he's actually found around central Queensland in, into Northern Territory. Now, being a monitor, you can see he has that forked tongue, which is a little bit like a snake. Um, and he has extremely long claws and nails. Now, unlike many other monitors, this lizard actually doesn't climb trees very often and instead he uses his claws to dig lots of holes and places to dig under. Now you can see right next to his eyes he has that big ear hole there so the ears look very different to human ears they're actually all on the inside instead of the outside and as well as that this guy the food that he'll be eating is a little bit different as well so he can actually eat lots of different other animals so he's a meat eater um, if it's decaying or old he actually enjoys that quite a lot he's a little bit of a scavenger um, but they are also known to eat lots of venomous snakes and other lizards different birds and things like that as well now what he will do if he's trying to defend himself is actually turn around and use his big strong tail. So what he will do is he will actually use it like a whip to defend himself and to scare off other animals.